All right, so it is June 29th. Uh, the girls flew back to Kansas City on Wednesday, which was the 26th of June, and uh, they got home okay. I'm in Granada right now by myself on the boat, and uh, I've just prepped everything. I've installed the third reef on the main. Uh, I had a second anchor out because I thought we were gonna just get a little bit of waves here, but it turns out the forecast changed, so now it's looking like we might have a Cat 1 uh, hurricane fly over us. So. I'm not going to stick around for that. We're under hurricane warnings, and uh, so I'm leaving tonight in about an hour and a half. Um, it's been cloudy, rainy all day, and uh, with three reefs in, we should be good to 25 to 30 knots. Uh, I'm going to have some dinner. I'm going to take a nap for an hour. I'm going to take off. Luckily, last night, I made uh, a large batch of curry chicken, which I really like. And so uh, this is this is dinner before we go. It's 90 nautical miles, but the seas are a little uh, what we'll call sporty. So that, usually that means one foot to one uh, second. Uh, they kind of stack up on you. It's not real comfortable. So uh, with three reefs in, we should be able to get five knots. Um, when we do five knots over 90, uh, 90 miles, we're looking at uh, an 18 hour sail by myself. So this is gonna be a first for me. Um, to solo sail really anywhere uh, but we've got the autopilot in here that works uh, but the one at the helm doesn't so that's going to complicate things I could motor the entire way we have enough fuel I capped I topped off the fuel but the problem is is the boat's actually more stable in the water with the sails up as long as we don't get hit with anything over 30 35 knots uh, we should be fine should be we'll see what happens uh, okay so it's nine o'clock uh, I've got the engine shut off. They didn't, I had them on maybe 20, 25 minutes, and uh, we started getting enough wind that I could sail, and I let the Genoa out. Uh, I've got two reefs in it, two reefs in the main. Uh, we're doing, uh, I don't know, four to seven knots. Depends on where exactly the wind's at, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's much smoother with the sails, but as you can kind of tell, maybe you can't pretty rolling. So I'm really glad we're doing this uh, now instead of maybe trying to jump the gun or uh, trying to wait till tomorrow. There's a lot of people who are going to wait till tomorrow. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Everybody's saying that it's not going to hit Grenada and uh, probably won't. But if it does, I'm better safe than sorry. All right, it is Sunday morning, uh, June 30th. Just approaching, I guess I'm 10 and a half nautical miles outside of Trinidad. Uh, the evening turned into a very nice ride. Uh, didn't get a whole lot of sleep with it being myself, but uh, you can see the sea state right now, very calm. And uh, we've got about 10, 12 knots of wind. So we're doing four or five knots. And uh, I've, got, I've got a couple reefs in to be conservative in case anything blows in it it's not going to but be safe just in case and uh that's been nice has it's been a good solo sail so we're gonna get checked in here to trinidad and uh see what happens all right sunday morning uh i haven't been running the engine for a while now it's been nice and gentle uh, and 18 knots for guests. I've got full sail up. Uh, it's just absolutely pretty unbelievably so. And uh, the views on Trinidad is just outstanding. I'm going to try to zoom in here. 
excited to be here. Uh, we might get some rain later today, but nothing like what Grenade is doing. Uh, now they're saying that Hurricane uh, Merle will be a category by the time it passes St. Vincent. That's crazy. Leaving last night was way the right decision for me. Uh, I know we had other friends that decided not to go. And that's their call. I have no idea. This is a concern. We've got to make their own decision on what to do, but uh, Sailing overnight, so sailing this has been about, it's going to be about 15 hours. And uh, it was it was kind of a little scary at first. Uh, I was out, but I didn't get any real bad weather. It's kind of bumpy and rolly to begin with. Uh, it's really smooth. Yeah, it's really nice. So really glad I made the call. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so I baked a batch of rolls. Uh, I didn't quite get the airflow on top. They're done, but they're just not browned because the airflow didn't get to the centers. The bottoms are nice though. You can see the, the bottoms there. But uh, I also made some pretzels that turned out to be pretzel rolls because my, my rolls weren't uh, thin enough, but man, they, they taste really good. Um, this is what I'm doing while everybody's gone. I'm having a great time. So this is our second load, uh, 10 bags. We've got uh, food, clothes, uh, some dog food, and uh, cleaning supplies. Leo and Lola. This is Miss Cujo and her family. Hello, Jesse. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Captain Phil, Godspeed, the Lord be with you, my friend. Guys.
Peter, thanks for your help. This is great. Yeah. Lola, Leo, thanks you guys for your help. Let's uh, finish getting loaded. Uh, this could go. It's a bag of clothes. Okay. And uh, we'll finish unloading the stuff down here. Oh, one more water, huh? We had two groups that we split donations up to here. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, police on the dock keeping people back. And then uh, workers. That's everything. You're welcome. Uh, we'll be back to visit. You have my number, so whenever you're coming through, I normally do a barbecue and all that's in the key. So when you're coming through, get a give me a call. All right. All right. All the best, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Peter, what? There's the customs building and immigration. Uh, there's not much left there. To, uh, this is Union Island and the Grenadines, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, lots of damage. This wasn't the eye of Burl, but it was within uh, 15 miles. So lots of destruction. All right. All right. This is Peter and Connie from uh, Roller Coaster. This is in uh, Clifton. Another building right here, but it's completely gone. And it was a little bit larger than that building, if I remember right. This is more of Clifton uh, Bay on Union Island. afternoon so we can arrive in Trinidad in the morning it's a 18 hour sail but uh, you can see the destruction from the hurricane on this side uh, most houses no roofs there's a couple left but uh, most everything is, is is destroyed in the distance I don't know how easy it is to see that but same same over there This is what's left of Frigate Island on Union. So it's a, Frigate Island is a little island right next to Union Island, which is the southernmost island in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, as you can see, there are no birds left here. Uh, there's no vegetation left. Looks like it stripped the rock almost completely clean. It's amazing. I've just anchored out in Chagrarmus uh, Bay in Trinidad. Uh, got quite uh, a load up for Grenada, Karakou Island, and for uh, Union Island from the Grenadines. So it's about half and half, a little bit more for the Karakou, but not a lot more. So <laughs> I'll just start here, let me zoom out as much as I can. So I've got um, some bed clothes. I've got, uh, these are all kids' clothes, kids' games, kids' toys on the table. I've got a water pump for one gentleman. I've got shovels, packets, um, or they're, they're uh, shovel packets, but they've got shovels, axes, machetes. I've got a bunch of handles for mops and brooms. Um, I've got a 10 horsepower dinghy engine underneath here. All these green bags are more shovels more shovels over there and build kits. Um, there's all kinds of, uh, uh, shoot, I think it's 600 pounds of nails on the bottom of that stack. This is all on the outside. So now we're going inside. Um, we've got buckets. We've got water, some more animal feed, um, feminine products, food, blankets, Let's see here, let me turn the light on. Here we go. All right, so coming down here, 
we've got Habitat for Humanity was awesome. And they gave us boxed canned goods that filled up this entire front cabin. Whole lots of canned food, really cool. Um, on top of it, we've got uh, more feminine products. We've got gloves. Oh, inside here is all more clothes filled up above the sink. Um, back here in my cabin, I've got uh, a grill. We've got a nail gun for roofing nails. Cleaning supplies. Come over here. All right, so that's the Karakou side. This here is the Union Island side for Clifton. And uh, let me just poke in here, we'll turn the light on. All right, so food kits all the way full. Bags of clothes all the way up. We've got this, we've got shoes, we've got boots, toilet paper, rope, building supplies. And then we've got um, toilet paper back into there. We've got freeze dried rations. Um, there's more, more boxes in the back. I didn't have to fill up the bed this time though. So that was, uh, so it's more space. We could have had something, but we've got, I don't know how much water. We've probably got 40, 30 or 40 cases of water. I think 30 maybe, and uh, just lots of stuff. So this is gonna be a fantastic trip. I'm excited to leave tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. sailing by myself this time. Uh, but I'm just approaching Grenada. I started uh, about 2.30, 3 o'clock this morning with the trip ahead. And uh, here's Grenada. We're getting here just as the sun's going down, which is all right by me. Probably be anchoring in the dark, but uh, it's all right. But then you can see the island is just covered in mist. It is pretty okay. Kind of one of those things that you sail up on and you go, oh, I don't know about this. But, uh, no, it's all right. We've got uh, one reef in the main. We've got the full uh, Genoa out. And uh, just got a whole lot of stuff. And uh, it's about a 90-mile sail, 80, 85-mile sail. And uh, right now we're doing five and a half, six knots. Um, did nine and a half for a while, I did three and a half for a while. So it's been uh, it's been a long day, but uh, I'm excited to be pulling into Grenada. I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. This is fantastic. Uh, so with sailing, sleeping overnight, it's uh, always a tough one. These boats were all tied down with hurricane straps. You can see the big blocks. And uh, hurricane still pushed them over. As you can see, a lot of buildings are gone. Uh, there's a trimaran upside down. I can't zoom in on that. That's crazy. I'm going to uh, I'm going to run over to this other dock. I couldn't find anybody in customs and immigration, which I'm not really surprised about. But um, I got to find somewhere to dock to unload the supplies here. So we're going to run over to the dock and see if we can't find somebody there. Doc crew, Randy, Felix, and Andy, and some other guys. Sorry, I didn't get your names, but uh, help me unload. All right, 
this is the supply we left here and uh, we're unloaded so this is great it's uh mid-july everybody's gone getting ready to head back up north to try to help out with the relief aid for the islands waiting here to get the inverter it's under warranty it's being repaired tomorrow and um, got a hole in one of the exhaust tubes from the uh, generator so this is what we're looking at zoom in here let's zoom out there we go half all right so this is the exhaust um, fitting and uh, there's a hole right there so when the generator runs it pumps seawater through the engine through a heat exchanger and then out this pipe to go out to keep the generator cool that's a uh, uh, diesel anyway this hole this hole right here is is throwing salt water all over the inside of the generator compartment so my plan is I cut this five inch piece off uh, I'm gonna heat it up with this heat gun and then hopefully I'll be able to slide it on and put two clamps right here to do a temporary patch in the hole until I can get a replacement uh, I don't know if this is called an exhaust elbow or what it is but it's a stainless steel tube that shouldn't have had a hole in it yet anyway it's got about 1,000, 1,100 hours on it. So uh, I pressed it on quite a ways, but this little 22 degree angle, I think that's what it is, was really giving me some problems. So I got this board and this craft mat so it wouldn't damage the teak. And then I took this uh, large crest or uh, adjustable wrench. I put it on here like this. So it'd slide. And then I stood it up and I took the hammer and it just, it just pounded it and uh, it went on really easy. It wasn't, uh, wasn't a problem. All right, so complication. Remember it's Sunday, everything's closed. Um, I'm in Grenada. This is kind of shady. Uh, I don't see why it won't work, but the, um, I don't have any two inch band clamps. So I've got uh, one and a halfs. So what I've done is I've taken them apart and I've combined them together. I say it's shady. There's nothing really wrong with it, but um, you know, it's not the way I really want it. It's temp fix. It's gonna take. It's gonna hold us for a week. Sure. This exhaust elbow is. So here's here's the heat exchanger, and uh, we got water ethylene glycol or whatever it is flowing through the block to keep it cool and then you got seawater flows through this to keep that cool and it comes out here and it goes through here the exhaust elbow there's temperature and then you've got this connector you've got this pipe and you've got the patch which is right there so that hole was right there blowing straight on to the actual generator itself and then I can get back in here. If you come around here, you can see where it's connected to the hose and goes on out. It appears the patch is holding.
If you want to talk about the weird things that happen in the middle of the night, I wake up about uh, 2.30 this morning and uh, I've got no water, no water pressure, and the pump's just running. And um, I can't figure out what's going on. So I started the generator. I thought, well, maybe I just ran out of water. I started the generator, made half a tank of water, and um, turned the water pumps back on so that they'd prime up. And then all of a sudden I hear this water gushing out into this head. And the water was just flying out from underneath the sink. And there was a rupture in a steel, stainless steel braided pipe. Now, I'm in Grenada. I don't have any way to get to a parts store. It's raining like cats and dogs outside. So I went ahead and cut it, trimmed the hose back so it's all fresh pipe there. I found a fitting, <laughs> which is not really a fitting, but uh, I found a, a it's going to work as a, as a patch. And I'm going to put it on there with a couple of hose clamps. And hopefully this will hold until I can get to the hardware store uh, in a day or so because um, I think, what is it, storm, tropical storm Ernesto is going by to the north of us by a couple hundred miles, so we're, we're going to be soaked for a long time, just rain's coming like crazy. I've got it put on here, as you can see, uh, but I found another spot in the stainless steel braiding that's been nicked. Does not appear there's a rupture in the hose right there yet, but uh, I don't really feel good about that. I'm gonna turn the pressure on, the pumps on, see if that if it is a temporary hold, so I can at least run the back flush on the water maker because it didn't get to back flush after it ran. Well does not appear to be leaking. Well, that's a ridiculous fix, but it'll hold for a couple days.